Welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'm Morten LB0 Fox India. And I recently sold my ICOM IC7300 to a guy that had never owned nor operated much of HF radio. And I gave him some antenna tips while he was here and uh, buying my radio. But I figured this can make a great video for you guys. So I thought I'd talk about my five favorite antennas to recommend for new hams. It's not necessarily the best antennas. It's not necessarily the worst antennas, but they're all great starter antennas in their own unique way. So with no further ado, let's go to antenna number five. And antenna number five is an antenna that I, I don't have a lot of experience with. It's the G5RV. I own one G5RV, uh, which is made by uh, Tim N9SAB, which is a great portable antenna. But G5RVs are not only portable antennas, they're also great for home use. It's basically a dipole fed with ladder line. It's relatively easy to build if you have the parts yourself. And it's a not the best performer, but let's call it a medium grade performer, but it'll give you something important as a new ham. It's multi-banded as long as you use a tuner. And as a new ham, I would say the ability to operate on more bands than one is probably a good thing because you don't really know which bands you want to operate on. Is 80 your favorite band? Do you like talking about medical ailments? Or is 20 your favorite band? You like chasing DX? Perhaps you like to do CW on 30, all those kind of things. Well, you don't know that as a new ham. So the G5 RV is number five on my list. And antenna number four is an antenna that a lot of people love to hate. It's the random wire antenna, which actually isn't random at all. It's an N-fed antenna fed by a 9 to 1 on on. And what's great about this antenna is that it's also multi-banded with a tuner. It is not the best performer, but it's relatively easy to build and deploy for a new ham. You don't have to be spot on with the measurements. There are tables online that you can look up to find the right lengths for your N-fed half wave. And generally, the longer, the better. Get yourself a 9 to 1 on on cut the wire to approximately the recommended length, put it up in a tree on a mast, as a vertical, as a sloper, whatever way you want, and you'll make contacts. The downside to the random wire antenna is that you need a tuner, but most radios have a built-in tuner that can handle this fine. So number four on the list is the random wire antenna. The middle of my recommendations that neither worst nor best of my top five list is the well-known dipole antenna. It's an antenna that consists of a feed point and you have two equal length, a quarter wave each on it. A dipole is a great performer as long as you get it high enough, let's say about a half wave or higher, but even lower a dipole will perform. And dipole is probably the easiest or one of the easiest antennas you can build. You need two pieces of wires of the same length and obviously a quarter wave for those lengths. You need some way of making a feed point and um, that's it. You can string it up horizontally or vertically. Vertically is not that common and it's not that practical, if, at least for the lower bands. But put it up as an inverted V or a, as a flat top and it will perform for you. It is a monoband antenna though, so beware of that. Speaking about dipoles, I had my own dipole kit, which I sold. I don't sell them anymore, but if you want to get started, the uh, instructions are still on my YouTube channel and all the 3D printed parts can be downloaded from Thingiverse. Check the link down below for the antenna parts. So the dipole is the middle of the way antenna. Antenna number two as my recommendation for new hams is a quarter wave vertical. Like the dipole mentioned before, it's a monoband antenna. You have a quarter wave vertical element and you have a radial net beneath it. 
it's easy to build. I made a video on it on the easy. It's called the easiest POTA antenna ever. And uh, it's a great performer. A ground mounted vertical has a low radiation angle, which makes it ideal for those DX contacts, especially on the higher bands because lengths are shorter. So make yourself a 20 meter quarter wave vertical antenna and catch those DX. So the number two on the list is the quarter wave vertical antenna. And the number one spot on my list, which I recommend to almost all new hams, is the NFET half wave. It's easy to build. It's easy to buy. You need a 49 to one on un which you can either buy or make yourself. You need a half wave of wire on your lowest band that you're gonna perform on. It's multi-banded on every harmonic. So if you make a 40 meter NFET half wave, which will require you to have approximately 20 and a half meters of wire, you can have that antenna resonant on 40, 20, 15 and 10. So it's a four band resonant antenna. You don't need a tuner if you make it right. Um, I have several videos on several different NFED half waves. One of my favorites for portable use is the antenna you can see here. It's the radiostaff.com NFED half wave kit. It's easy to build for new ham, has great instructions and well built, but it's a portable antenna. But still, it's a good performer. And the good thing about NFED antennas opposed to dipoles and G5 RVs uh, or let's call them center fed antennas or off center fed antennas for that sake is that they're easy to deploy. You can feed the antenna at ground level. You can put it up as an inverted V and you only need one mast or tree to support it. So that's why I recommend the NFED half wave as my number one antenna for new hams. But do remember guys, your first antenna is not going to be your last antenna. So go ahead, experiment, but try one of these as your first antenna for ham radio for HF. I'm sure you're going to make some cues on it. You're going to have good experiences and you're going to learn something along the way, which will lead you to more antennas. And that's it for now, my friends. Hope you enjoyed this video, even though you might not be a new ham. Do you agree or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comments. Also click that thumbs up button while you're at it. And if you want to support the channel a little bit more, there are a couple of links down below. You can become a YouTube member. You can support me on Patreon. You can send me a super thanks. There are a lot of options if you want to support this channel. But that's only if you can afford it. Anyway, see you guys down the band. See you in my next video, 7-3.